I'm one minute, one minute early, but I just want to come up and test to see whether everything is all right. Okay, I think now I see people, so means it's、uh, I'm live. Hello, everyone. Hi. Oh, Trayvon's here too. Okay, let's see. Let me find Trayvon. Here we are. Send. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Do you like my onesie? I love it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. No, this morning I woke up and I was like, "Oh, we're gonna do the dream." And I got this for Christmas. I got this one for myself, and I got two one for my little girls. Then I was like, "This is probably the perfect <laughs> day to wear it." How are you today? I'm doing great. I'm、Did、super that? excited for this. Yeah, and I love that onesie. I wish I had one too. You know. <laughs> I was thinking about that. I was like, "What if we both wear the onesie? Would it be right?" So we are talking like in the dream, dream、uh, realm. So. Uh, like before we jump in, I kind of want to take three deep breaths because you know I was upstairs with girls, you know, like、uh, finished their school school time. So I just literally just sat down. So I want to kind of like take three deep breaths and we jump right in. Okay. Sounds good to me. Let's do it. All right. So we just do very simple one, just deep breathing, and、uh, we just exhale whatever we we、uh, whatever happened and、uh, whatever we heading on, and there it'll be. Okay. On this、uh, live, you know, I want to kind of like open a little bit, just in- introduce you on my perspective, and I will ask questions about who you are, and you can tell a little bit by yourself. So, me and Trayvon, we connected probably way back in twenty twenty, around May,、uh, May or June, when I was on a、uh, through three months journey with、uh, Celia. And that time, I had some crazy dream, and she mentioned that, yeah, you know,、uh, Trayvon is doing some dream,、uh, you know, dream inspiration, and.、Uh, If you feel you know called to and have him to interpret a dream, so you have been interpreting interpreting my dream for last six seven months, and I think that is perfect time because probably I I call you also my teacher dream in this dream room. You are my teacher, and I I feel very、uh, honored to call myself a student of you because I actually learn a lot things from you, and I started to interpret these simple dreams for my sisters. You know, like you know in your first service. So this is my connection with you, and also we met uh, in uh, in Sedona as well. So we we are you are like my brother, and you are also my teacher and my friend. So I'm so happy you are here. So I open the floor for you. You can tell you know my audience and your audience that you know who you are and what 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 do you do? Yeah, well, let's start from there. <laughs> All right, beautiful. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for having me on. It's been quite a journey that we've gone on together. You've allowed me into your, your your inner psyche, which is so personal. You know, to to work with somebody's dreams is very intimate, and、yeah. it it cultivates a beautiful relationship. So thank you for that.、Mm-hmm. And yeah, my name's Traven.、Um, I've been for years. I've been wanting to get into dream work, but I just never remembered my dreams. For whatever reason, I'd try to keep a journal, but I couldn't remember them, and it's because of I was I was drinking excessive amounts of caffeine, and my sleep cycles weren't very intentional. So my sleep wasn't good. I wasn't actually dropping deeply into REM sleep, so I wasn't able to extract the the dream data. And on top of that, when I whenever I would have a dream, I didn't really understand what it was, so I didn't even know why I wanted to remember my dreams. <clears throat> the beginning of last year, I I started to. Dive deeper into this work. I, I embarked on this.、Um, it's a shamanic plant dieta, which、yeah. is where you you clean up your diet. You start to work with this plant, and you start to have very intense and vivid dreams. And the the plants come and teach you in your dreams. So I started to remember my dreams for the first time because my diet was clean, my sleep cycle was aligned,、mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, this whole world started to open inside of me. And I was like, wow. 
this is what I've been missing. So I started to log my dreams, track my dreams. And at that time I was taking this, um, it was like a spirituality course. It was all around ascension and, and what's going on in the world right now. But there was one section on dreams. And yeah. I started to learn some techniques and how to interpret dreams. I learned what dreams were, why they're important, how people can use them to grow and expand. Mm-hmm. I started to understand the different dynamics inside of the dreams, the symbol, the symbolism and the metaphor. And I started to analyze my own dreams. And when I become passionate about something or excited about something, I go like full force. So I dove in, I read a few books, I like started analyzing my dreams and all my friends dreams every single night. And very quickly, I realized that I had a natural passion for this. Because my entire life, I have always been interested in psychology. I've always been fascinated with people and understanding people, understanding why they do what they do, looking at different dynamics between people and trying Mm -hmm. to figure out what makes them tick or trying to figure out what's outside of their awareness. And I've been doing this for fun my entire life. And when I started to dive into dreams, I realized that it was the same thing, but internally. And I was Mm -hmm. like, whoa, this is what I've been training for my entire life. Because as within, so without. So by understanding the outside realms, I've already had like a, I've already jumped into the water of this experience. Yeah. Once I under, started to understand more symbolism, it just started to click. And I was like, whoa, this is fascinating. And I started to dive very deeply into this world and see how it's so much larger and so much more important than so many people believe. Because for so long, we've been disconnected from that ancient wisdom. We've forgotten what they are, why they're here. We, yeah. we don't realize like every single night we're getting straight messages from source. Yeah. We're getting messages from our higher self that's trying to guide us and speak to us. But people are like, oh, my dreams don't make any sense. They're crazy. I'm crazy. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the that's the one of the no, that's not true. It's just you don't understand the language of the dreams. Just the language of the universe is symbolism and metaphor. It's not English, totally. Spanish, you know, it's yes. a, it's a yeah. different language. It's beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, thank you for the. You know, I think、uh, you went pretty deep about about <laughs> this, and I think it's it's perfect for us to,、uh, you know, smoothly, you know, talking about the myth about dreams. Because, like you said, people don't understand they hard to interpret their dreams. They think they are crazy, and or they have this like misinterpretation about their dreams. Like I used to, so I will. Maybe we can talk about it. You know, some part I realized that, that I had this misunderstanding about dreams. Like, I had people two two days ago. I had my friend that uh, uh, like message me, said, "Hey, Gina, I dreamed about you," but he didn't tell me what what is about it. And I know that if he cannot tell me what's that about, it might be something sensitive. Either we had a fight, or like intimate relationship, or whatsoever. Because that's how I felt. I, I feel ashamed if I have this, you know, sexual dream about somebody, and I was,、uh, you know, <laughs> is that mean? Is that mean in real life with this person, right? So the myth number one, I want you to clarify, like the the person we dream we dreamed about in our dream is not right represents the person itself. So I want you you clarify a bit because I know what I'm what I mean, but I cannot just put in a perfect way. So yeah.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So this, I love talking about this because this is what blew my mind. So one hundred percent of the time, every single person, place, or thing or object in your dream is representing an aspect of you. One hundred percent of the time, whether that's a friend of yours, a family member, an animal, it's always the person that's dreaming. And very, there's like a very small percentage of time that it can actually be representing the person outside as well. But it's very, very, very rare. But what happens is that our psyche utilizes people in our life to reflect back an energy. So the reason that we friends of ours show up in our dreams is because that friend holds a specific energy. So you have to ask yourself, what does that person mean to me? What do they represent to me in my life? And whatever those characteristics are, whether they're happy, sad, excited, whatever they are to you, that's、mm-hmm. reflecting back the same part of you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I was the so this morning he said he's like I just told you、uh, I had a dream about you two nights ago. Now you're gonna do a dream life, and I was like I didn't say hey. That's why you probably gonna hop on to clarify certain <laughs> things because obviously you don't feel comfortable to tell me what that about, right? And I don't want to push him. So I think that's good to like remind people every single person, basically mainly person. I don't know. I think animal has specific different meanings to me. Like you know we can hop into a little bit like a. 
uh, you know, like certain animals. Like I, I, I dreamed about a frog. So that that's I, I really want to ask that one. But also to clarify a little bit, some people they will say I dream about like they say, oh, I had a dream two like two days ago. Then maybe two days later or two weeks later, same thing happened. I want you to kind of differentiate what what in what kind of circumstance this forecasting dream versus the dream that has messages for us. Because I feel like that's pretty important, right? People say, no, if, if everything about that's me, why the things I dreamed about two, uh, maybe a, a, a week ago, things happened. So I don't know whether you have an explanation for this one. So we can clarify yeah. that too. Yeah. So this is one of the things that got me super excited when I started to like dive really, really deep in my dreams. And I've logged like hundreds and hundreds of my dreams now at this point. And I started yeah. to realize that there's different categories. And I've read a bunch of books. I've seen a lot of information on this. And there's not a lot of people talking about this. Uh -huh. So there's there's so many different types of categories in dreams that people can have. But if you're not an expert dreamer, if you don't track your dreams and work with them, you think mm -hmm. they're all the same. The majority okay. of our dreams, I like to call them, they're just like, typical narrative dreams there's a narrative there's a story and there's a lesson and a message but then there's all these other different subcategories which i go into in my course but mm -hmm. um the one that you're speaking to is called a prophetic dream okay. and so the idea is that our dreams come through our our, our soul our higher self and mm -hmm. our higher self is connected directly to source and yeah. in carl Jung language it's called the the unconscious the collective mm -hmm. unconscious and that's how we're all connected and mm -hmm. all of the information that ever existed and ever will exist it is, exists in that in that space. And dream the dream space is directly connected to that that collective unconscious. Mm -hmm. So occasionally we can have dreams of the future, and they're called prophetic dreams. Mm. So you'll have a dream, and it it's, to, the way to be able to tell if it's a prophetic dream is that there's like a slightly different energy. So you need mm -hmm. to be working with your dreams pretty consistently. But the prophetic dream will have an energy that just, it feels real. You're just like, whoa, that, like you wake up and you're like, that felt really real. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. for example, I can share one with you. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So um, a couple months ago, I was going through a really intense experience. I just, my partner and I split up. I didn't have anywhere to live. I was still traveling. I was trying to figure out what to do, where to go. I was, yeah. I was crazy. I was all over the place in a very dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. And I had this dream. And I still didn't know where to go at this time, but I had this dream where I was on this beach and I was hanging out. And then all of a sudden, my best friend from back home ran up and I ran up to him and we, we hugged. And in the dream, it was my birthday. And he was like hugging me. Happy birthday. Yeah. And it was beautiful. It was so loving. And I woke up. I was like, wow, that was really powerful. I feel like that happened. And I yes. asked myself, I was like, OK, well, is this a prophetic dream? But that was in Florida. And I thought I was going to Mexico at the time. I didn't mm -hmm. know where mm -hmm. to go. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. My birthday is in a month. Like, I'm not going to Florida. I'm not going to be with my friend Doug at that time. This doesn't make any sense. So I just let it go. Yeah. And then all of these different events happen. I end up finding out that I'm going to stay with a friend in, <laughs> in Florida. And I go back to Florida two days after my birthday. And I'm on the beach at night. And I wasn't supposed to hang out with anybody. I was just meditating on the beach. And my friend's like, hey, can I come meet up with you? He comes to the beach. And then I, I literally go up to hug him. I'm like, whoa, I dreamed of this. Literally, I yeah. had this experience. Wow, that's really, really uh, interesting because I just had a flash. Is, is that also happens when you sometimes, like I literally, I had two, yesterday morning. And the Airbnb I'm going to in Sedona, she told me she doesn't have this washer and dryer. And I was reading the message. I suddenly had the image come in. Remember, actually, I don't exactly know, but I know it's in Sedona. I know there's something to do with this uh, Airbnb thing. And I was like, what, what is next? I tried to remember more, but I was, at that time, I was like, is this something I already dreamed about or things that I'm seeing the future? You know, like, I, but I feel like maybe I had a dream way time ago, but that time I didn't know that's Sedona. Since I've never been to Sedona, like, you know, my first time Sedona is October. No, like August. But this dream was way, way, you know, back years ago. Mm -hmm. So I was like, am I actually kind of remember something now? So I was like, I'm so excited to go to Sedona to see whether, you know, <laughs> like, find this connection. But yeah, thanks for that one. Okay, now the third and one. One more, one more yeah. thing on this. So yeah, yeah. the idea of deja vu. Okay. What um, certain channels that have channeled this information say that deja vu is the experience when you have a prophetic dream 
but you don't remember the dream. And you have this experience in the in real life. You're like, whoa, I've been here before. Yes, and what that yes. is, is you remembering the dream that you've seen that moment before within your dream. But you've got it. Yeah, exactly. But you moment, forgot about it. And to that moment, you activated the dream that you had, but you forgot it. Exactly. That's that's so profound <laughs> because I think in, in 2020 or those last couple of months, I, I had the flash of certain way I was up. No, I, I've been this before. Like I, you know, like remember certain scenes. So now it makes sense because of the how, how that even happened. Mm-hmm. Great. All right. <laughs> I, I, I love this. I, I wrote down some of the my side, of, but you can always, you know, put it uh, add up because I think this is really a good, like, a, a, a run through of the common myth. So the third one is like dream about that. I, you know, when I was, I remember a couple of times I dream about my, either my mom died or my dad died or a couple of days ago, I actually dream about my uh, girl's, the girl's dad's grandma died and I, I i don't want to tell anybody but now i know it's a not not about this person gonna die so i want you to refer to it especially the older like a like a, our parents generation or like grandma grandpa's generation versus younger child i want you to kind of like touch on that i know that they are all different yeah but but the main thing is not this person gonna die so let's make sure about that <laughs> Yeah, so there's there's actually so dreams are so multidimensional, so it's never yeah. like a one a one path kind of thing. But yeah. generally speaking, whenever there's a death in a dream, it's usually a good thing because it's representative of a death of a part of you that's no longer serving. So it's like mm-hmm. it's not a bad death thing. It's like a okay. a part of you is being released and there's like mm-hmm. a rebirth energy. And okay. that depends on what that person is to you. So you have to ask yourself because that's a mm-hmm. part of you that's dying. So what is the energy of that person that is passing away in your dream? But at the same time, people that are super connected to your dreams will often be warned, warned when someone in their life is going to die. So that Mm -hmm, is, mm -hmm. it's like, um, it's our ability to be connected to the the universe. It's like, we are psychic beings and Mm -hmm. dreams are one form of communication. And somebody that's working with their dreams often like you will probably be informed when a family member is going to die before they die or as they die or something like that. But uh-huh, for uh-huh. the majority of time, it's referring to a part of you because everyone in the dream okay. is representing a part of you. Yeah, that makes sense. That's totally makes sense because long before I always dream about my, not always, probably had two or three times about my dad. And my dad carries very, very strong, this emotional attachment. And I see myself like, you know, a lot of time I see my dad, I see myself in, inside him. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's that's my dad. And I that part of energy, I don't like it. So maybe it's like, you know, Especially in which period of the uh, my life he showed up. Obviously, he showed up in different energy because the mm-hmm. relationship we are involving, we are changing. So that's that's a good you know validation because I know other people out there is like, oh, I dream somebody died, and I was like, oh, maybe it's, it means somebody gonna die. Uh, like you said, you know, like you might gonna get a warn instead of like somebody just out of nowhere they're gonna die. So those are my side. Do you have any other the myth? you going to clear, you want to clear, uh, you know, up before we jump into the short period of the dream interpretation? I think that would be. Yeah. So one myth is that people think uh-huh. that dreams are meaningless. Like, so if you don't have exposure to dreams, you're not sure uh-huh. if they mean anything or you think they're random, but every single dream is a gift and it's, it's a masterpiece. Uh-huh. Dreams are masterpieces and they're trying to guide you always to, to healing parts of yourself to understanding parts of yourself. They're trying to guide you on your spiritual journey always. And mm-hmm. even if you're having, it's it's good to know, even if you have a prophetic dream or if you have a dream that's not quite the, just a simple narrative dream, mm-hmm. even then you can still analyze the dream like a dream. So the prophetic dream of the future, you can still analyze that as you would a dream. So mm-hmm. dreams are always working like very hyperdimensionally. And another thing that I wanted to just speak to, it's not quite a myth, but just Mm -hmm. that's good to know, is that you spoke about your your father showing up in your dreams. So the idea of dreams is that everyone in the dream is you, but the same thing goes for life. So everyone in your life is a reflection of you. Mm -hmm. And we all have these archetypical energies inside of us, our mother, our father, you know, all of these Mm. examples. So the reason that our parents show up in our dreams is because we learned how to be a parent through them. So we literally, our archetypical mother and father are mirror images of our parents in real life. Mm -hmm. Wow. Maybe that's deep because I'm like, I'm a parent right now. So, and I was like, 
I was just trying to think about it. What's my because my dad, and it's so funny. If, if you think about it, my mom, my dad, my sister, and my dad is the common figure in my dream. Like it's say ten dreams, he would probably show up six times. And I was dead. Why are you always in my dream? But I know that the energy. But I was like, why are you always dream about my dad? And like literally, like most of the time, he's in my dream. <laughs> Either you know some some really interesting not bad way but i also see maybe also the energy with the because the guy also represents the ma- like masculine i think we will talk uh talk a bit more of female male you know same sex and or like uh, like opposite sex but i was like yeah it's interesting because i was uh, like observing the relationship between me and my dad in the dream is because me and my masculine and uh, the, what the kind of energy he carries the masculine energy that you know connect with me all is mine so mm-hmm. I was like really interesting to observe my me and my daddy my dream. <laughs> so yeah, and on top funny. of that, it's it's also like generally speaking, like my mother shows up in my dreams a lot. For example, uh-huh. so typically what I've noticed is that the opposite sex parent in our yeah. dreams will show up very often because it seems that there's a lot of trauma or unresolved energies between that archetypical energy inside of us. Because a lot of us, even if our parents were quote unquote good parents maybe they didn't show up in the ways that we needed and that energy is reflected inside in our own ability to show up for ourselves. so your Mm -hmm. father your internal father is literally your internal father so if you have any discord or disharmony between you and your father externally Mm -hmm. that same ability Mm -hmm. to father yourself appears inside yeah how my how i father myself or mother myself right exactly i'm gonna think about that a bit more (laughs) okay so uh yeah i was like this is deeper now i was like uh how am I, I always think about how i mother myself because i'm a woman right so it's exactly because it's to... the opposite energy so that's why it shows up more often because it's harder for yeah you so to like, embody it how i father myself i i don't know i don't even know how to answer the question right now exactly like, oh, oh okay <laughs> this is my homework after after this live oh man yeah this um, stuff is exciting but it's not easy for sure right crazy okay do, do you have anything else to add before I, I gonna, you know, let's do diving to some, uh, like, you know, live interpretation that, uh, let's do it. I think my friends, they are super, super excited. We were just talking about, you know, the live today. Yesterday I was talking, Oh, I'm going to do a live with Trayvon talking about dream. And uh, somehow we were sharing our dreams, you know, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to do a live with Trayvon, you know, and then uh, they, they throw me some piece. I was like, Great. So let me ask Trayvon, you know, and uh, I think some of them, they are on the, on, on, on the live right now. So, um, let's do the first, like first one, this, I'm not going to say her name because, you know, you're very, uh, very, very personal. So what does it mean when an, uh, an far removed ex-boyfriend shows up in a dream as an identical twin when he is not a twin in real life? No engagement happened in the dream. He was just as a party I came to. Okay. So do you have enough information to kind of like give a little bit? Like yeah, little, so yeah. To, to, to truly analyze it, you need more of the dream, but I'll, I'll mm-hmm. show you what, what comes up with yeah, some yeah, techniques yeah. and things to think about. So yeah. anytime, first of all, the first thing that I always say <laughs> is that yeah. everyone in your dream represents a part of you. Yeah. So the first thing to know is that it's not your ex-boyfriend that's showing up in your dream. Okay. It's the energy of her ex-boyfriend that's showing up in her dream as her. Because mm-hmm. that that man or that that energy of that guy yeah. exists within her. Mm-hmm. The next thing is that any time in a dream, when there's somebody from our past or there's a location from our past, whether mm-hmm. that's a childhood home or an old childhood friend or an ex boyfriend from the past, mm-hmm. that's one way that dreams give us hints as to where the trauma or the energy or the lesson that this specific dream is trying to teach you was originated. So mm-hmm. most of our traumas. And I use that word as like a blanket word. It's not just like extreme, like intense mm-hmm. trauma. A trauma is any energetic um, disharmony that yeah, occurred at any age yeah. in any time period. Traditionally, very, very young in childhood, but it can happen at any point in your life. Yes. So this dream is basically saying that there's an energetic distortion that was created during the time period that you were with your ex-boyfriend. Mm-hmm. So that gives us a hint as to, okay, what was going on in my life at that time? Yeah. Another yeah. thing to be aware of is that that dream was triggered by something that happened in the present moment within the last two to three days, typically before you had that dream. Mm -hmm. So what event happened within the last three days that triggered something 
that was similar to what you were experiencing when you were with your ex-boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And since it was an ex-boyfriend, it's probably in relation, but it's not in relation to him. It's in relationship to herself. Okay. Most likely. And mm-hmm. so, okay, keeping all that in mind, which is, yeah, I yeah. know it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm like... But there's, there's little bread cl- there's little yeah, breadcrumbs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now that we know that, anytime that there's a a male, like a, in, generally speaking, anytime a woman's dreaming and there's a male, mm-hmm. it can represent the animus. And the animus is a character, it's basically the masculine aspect of your soul. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the whole idea, and this is like a Carl Jung idea, the whole idea is that in order to find wholeness and to be truly healed, we need to perfectly harmonize our masculine and feminine energies. Mm-hmm. And a woman, traditionally speaking, has more feminine energy. So to find harmony, she needs to bring more masculine energy in harmony. So there's this character called the animus that will show up in the dream as a masculine figure to kind of guide yourself deeper into a relationship with your masculine. Yeah. So the fact that this was an identical twin to her, it's basically saying this is this is an identical energy that you have in your masculine. Mm. And to to look at it from that perspective. So a question that I would ask her is, get get clear on what your ex-boyfriend represented to you so like close your eyes ask yourself what does he represent to me what qualities or characteristics come to mind without thinking don't overthink it don't say oh that's a bad thing or that's too mean like be brutally honest with yourself because whatever you project onto him is talking about yourself that needs to be looked at and a lot of people a lot a lot of time my clients are like i don't want to be rude i'm like no you got to be honest yes honest pretty truth right <laughs> yeah. truth doesn't mean that all the rainbow and the sunshine <laughs> yeah you're right exactly wow okay yeah. so i then go because i think that she's when we talk about she's like, i don't understand it's that you know like he, he doesn't in real life he's not a team why somehow like that's an identical team in the dream so now makes sense is the is the similar identical the energy that mm-hmm. uh, he's her ex boyfriend carries right Okay. Yeah, and also on top of that, Carl Jung has this idea that anytime identical twins show up in a dream, it's yeah. representing your higher self is present in that dream. Whoa. So it, it's just like another little twinkle that this is a dream specifically from your higher self, so pay attention. I think that, yeah, I think I, I would suggest her to do a like uh, deeper uh, like interpretation with you after after the live, or I think I forwarded her, uh, like one of the person I forwarded to you, and I think I would invite her to have a more a like detailed, give more of information, help her understand. Because if you have your, I feel like if higher self involved, that's more message. What if that say to something or something happened in the party, but not necessarily a contact. Maybe he did something. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's the message. So I think that's pretty. I have the body chill when I talk about this. I feel <laughs> like that's 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 great. Okay. Now, the second part, second one is also from one of my sister, and uh, uh, she's very simple. I don't know whether you can get uh, more information or interpretation from this, but let's try. She said, what does it mean when you are handing gliding? What? Gliding. Hand gliding. It's like uh, you're gliding. holding on to that thing. And... <laughs> and one hand slips off, and you crash into it, an auditorium filled with everyone, everyone you have ever known. So it's kind of like awkward, like, oh right so i don't know this is just one sentence and i was like yeah so yeah. generally speaking like i need a lot more to work with the yeah. client because the the symbols are very specific to the person but i'll mm-hmm. go with what what's coming to me okay yeah 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 so in a dream anytime you're navigating at a certain pace so whether you're walking or you're on a bike or you're in a car or you're on a plane or you're flying the the speed at which you're moving forward is representative of the speed at which you're navigating on your spiritual path yeah and the quickest in a dream besides teleportation is flying. So <laughs> hang gliding is representative of like you're flying. You're you're in the sky. You're fucking you're you're navigating Whoa. very quickly. But yeah. hang gliding, when people think of hang gliding, what do you think of? You think of something that's dangerous, that's risky. Yeah. yeah. So she's probably he, she, your friend is probably navigating their spiritual path at a very quick rate, a very quick pace. Hey. Yeah. But it's in like a risky way. There's something dangerous or mm. maybe not being completely aware of the way that she's going or the, the way that she's navigating. And when your hand slips, it's kind of like an accident. And I would ask her which hand because oh. hands, it's probably, yeah, I don't know. But She said the one hand, of, so I don't know. 
<laughs> yeah, so the left and the right hands have different meanings. Yeah. And our hands are our ability to give and receive love. So the masculine is the right, and the right hand is your ability to give love. The yeah. left is your feminine, and it's your ability to receive love, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And the left and the right also correspond to right the hand. ego. She's in the right hand. Oh, she's on the oh, She's in the okay. right. <laughs> she's yeah, listening because so... she's so interested. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, so the right hand represents your ability to, to give love. So something on her path, her ability to give love slipped off. So this has this is in relation to the way that she gives love, whether to herself or to others, probably herself. Uh -huh, but it's uh -huh. a, a reflection. The way she gives love to herself is the same way she gives love to everyone else. Yeah, yeah. So whatever that is, it's slipped off. So she can think back to two or three days beforehand. Like, was she in a situation where she could have given herself more love and she didn't? Or uh -huh, uh -huh. she could have given someone else more love and she didn't? Something like that. It's just yeah. kind of to, to jog your memory. Uh -huh. And then an auditorium is where you go to be seen. You know, you're, mm. you're in front of everyone. And yes. the reason that everyone is there that she known in her entire life is because those are all parts of herself. Everyone you've ever known in your entire life is a part of yourself. So it's mm. almost as if the totality of who you are was watching you in this experience and you crashed and it's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. So basically it's like your higher self, like all parts of you are watching you navigate and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So you, and you basically, crashed. you crashed. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, basically you are watching yourself. Okay. You know? So there, there's more information. So the yeah. auditorium was very wet. There's lots of puddles. Okay. So water in a dream Emotion. represents emotions. Exactly. I know. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. So lots of emotions and lots of puddles. It's like a puddle is something, it's like a little piece of water that you have to watch out for if you're walking, right? Yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of emotions in different parts of your life that you need to be very careful and make okay. sure from the symbols to, to give yourself love, even if you step in a puddle, even if you get wet, like give yourself that love no matter what. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I think it's so funny. I, I'm glad she's on it because I was like, should we guess it's left or right? Or what's the order term? How big is that? And, uh, you know, what what I think there. Okay. Uh, there's somebody asked a question. What is that? What does it mean if you are in a province called a medicine call? Cow? This is so general with, you know, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. Sure. So. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. You have to ask yourself, what does a cow mean to you? Yeah. Medicine and cow. Because, so animals, this is a good segue. So animals. Yeah. Whenever they show up in a dream, because animals are really good at embodying their energy. Like animals are who they are. They have they have qualities and characteristics, yeah. and those characteristics are used in the dream. So, mm -hmm. for example, a horse is known to be very powerful mm -hmm. and like radiant. You know, it's like yeah. the energy of a, of a horse. And all of these different animals have different energies. So, ask yourself, what does a cow mean to you? Mm -hmm. You know, like they they give abundantly. You know, there's there's milk and all this stuff that we can get from a cow. But you have to ask yourself, what does the cow mean to you? And then there's probably uh -huh. like um, a metaphor there or like a, a play on words like medicine cow yeah. means something specifically to you. A lot of the times there can be like a play on words, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Medicine cow. Yeah, medicine cow. cow. Yeah, because I think definitely it's a metaphor because he mentioned or she mentioned is the province province to me is a state or province it's a place so let, yeah. we are talking about animals so let's get into the animal it's it's, it's a frog animal i mean yeah of course <laughs> okay. that's from me okay this this one <laughs> so i dream a, a frog it's it's green so you know i i didn't know that's different color of frog i mean to me a frog is green but but this <laughs> frog is just normal size and he, he is on my aisle like eye level on a shelf and the frog is like a human just lay there and put the feet up. But I don't see the feet. The feet feel like a, my girls, like, it makes me feel like, a, you know, the girls have this mermaid. They, they dressed, the, not, not they dressed. I feel, the, but the frog in my dream was the halfway, have this, like, a mermaid tail. But he's put the, the foot or the tail, like, a <laughs> shelf and a wall. So the feet is on the wall, and he's pretty happy. He's, like, make make him very sell, you know, very, very like settling and then, and uh, just very happy. And I was like, and I was watching, like, he's just right in front of me doing all the thing, making himself comfortable. And I was like, hmm, frog, great. Because remember the other day we were interviewing Jimmy, you were talking about like, you know, the, the red and black vine is, you know, maybe Aya. And I was like, 
don't tell me they wanted me to go do, do another blue ball because that's insane <laughs> to me. Froggy is blue ball combo. And I was like, I did a both blue ball and a combo in 2020. So I was, that's why this dream come from. So maybe you can help me to understand that thing a little bit. Yeah. yeah so the idea is that the reason that animals show up in our dreams or in the world, because yeah. just like an animal shows up in your dream, and this is, this is just kind of a segue, but yeah. anytime you encounter an animal in real life, that's mm-hmm. not an accident. Everything's on purpose. Yeah. So if you get in the habit of asking yourself, what does this animal mean to me? You can get a lot of information. And the idea is that all of the animals exist inside of us because we are everything. Mm-hmm. So you have to find out what is the energy of that animal? What are they known for? What are they like? What energy do they hold? And frogs are, they're known to transform. They're like Mm. renewal and regeneration. You know, they, they turn from tadpoles into frogs and all these things. Yeah. And combo is all about cleansing and releasing, you know? Yeah. So what this tells me is that this is a time of transition and upgrades, Mm. you know, because it's like a transitional period of time for you. And the, the frog is green. And anytime there's a color, it's really important because they correlate to the different chakras. So yeah. it's telling us where that energy is speaking to or about. So in this mm-hmm. case, this frog is speaking to a transition in your heart space mm. and your heart chakra. Yeah. And you have to ask, so there was this part with the mermaid and that's very specific to yeah. you. So what does the mermaid represent to you? Do you have any personal like meaning for that? Like magical mermaid is like, you know, like same as unicorn. Like it's, you say it's not like good thing if you believe it it's it's there right so i was a frog with mermaid tail uh seems they are in the water right like you know but mermaid tail is and the mermaid tail i I know it's not green because i if i can remember frog is green the mermaid tail is not green it's something like pink or some other color but yeah well know. pink is still is pink and green still are hard. Hard. exactly <laughs> okay. so and on top of that you mm-hmm. said that um you said that the it's like a very magical energy right yeah and yeah. that's true yeah. so yeah. what it's saying is that and the, the frog has his feet up? He's relaxed. Yeah. He's smiling. He's happy. Yeah. And and frogs and mermaids are both ant, they're both um, creatures of water, and water correlates to emotions. <laughs> yeah. So this is saying that there's a there's a big transformation that you're going through right now, and it's a magical transformation. And but mm. it's so beautiful <laughs> that you can just relax. You can literally just lay back, relax, and enjoy the transformation process because the work yeah. that you're doing is going to be graceful. And it's uh-huh. all in the heart. So there's this big transition that you're going through. It seems that heart is, is a, a theme of my, right? Because you just interviewed my dream a couple of days ago about a heart. That's, I think that's, that one is really powerful. I want you to touch on that one. Um, mm-hmm. So how, how you want me, do you want me to kind of like a repeat a little bit of what that dream I dreamed about? And you can kind of like do a, you know, because I already did the integration, but I think it's really powerful about the masculine and the feminine and for the feminine part to watch the masculine. So I kind of brief a little bit about my dream. Uh, then you can, yeah. okay. So uh, the dream probably three, four days ago in my dream, I dreamt, I dreamed about a businessman, very good looking body, also strong in nice clothes. So everything tell me this person is, is actually a doing great act to me. You know, Sadi is doing great, good body, good looking, good clothing. You know, the way he talks, everything to me is he's he has nothing wrong. He's a perfect, set, successful, and like a businessman. But in my dream, as we were talking, then he got a phone call from his boss. His boss said, you are late. And he suddenly, he become pretty upset. And uh, I can feel the energy. Then the next scene, I think it's, he was in the room at a, a table of this jewelry i was like guy has a lot of jewelry that's that's really interesting but that table is against a bigger window and i can tell his place is up above you know like a big uh, not on the low level because i can basically see outside sky whatsoever so it's really high like uh, i don't know what floor is that but the table is against the window and it has some jewelry on it and i dream about it he picked up one i don't know what is that but when his hand moves through the jewelry the certain jewelry will make sound. And it's specifically mm. the snake, the, the one of it is the snake. It, 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 it seems to me it's dead. But when his hand hover over, the snake makes sound and the snake is black and red. And after that, the scene would be, the third one, the scene was, I was actually in his living room and I didn't see him, but I had a feeling is he's sick. The reason why is because his maid 
one girl carry out the bucket bucket of uh, his Persian stuff, but it's like a water, the wa water with uh, seaweed and uh, and the blood, but the blood is not like just like red blood. The blood is feels like more if solid blood. Like it, it reminds me of like in Chinese culture, we eat like duck or chicken, like uh, chicken, chicken blood. So we cook them certain way, so they are like solid blood. So the maids were carrying the buckets, this his Persian thing, and dump in the sewer. They go, and I was like, oh, this guy is definitely sick, and I was, I feel so bad for him, and I'm wondering whether he's okay. So these are kind of like basic the three uh, scenes of my dream about this. I think we we talk about that it's really powerful, but I want you to relate it on it. It's like figure, you know, the same sex, opposite sex, this color, mm -hmm. this Persian. So. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, it's so yeah. beautiful. And this is a really powerful dream because it had such an impact on you. And whenever you have a dream analysis and it like it shakes you and it resonates, you know that that's when the dream analysis was accurate. Yeah. So in this case, this man, like we spoke a little bit about before, is representing your masculine, but specifically your animus. And an animus is typically like this like radiant figure, you know, beautiful, good looking, you know, and you feel attraction towards that cre that, yeah. that part of you, you know, because yeah. it is you. <laughs> So this uh, tall, big, good-looking, successful businessman is representing that part of your masculine, the, the business masculine part of you. But you said at the same time that his boss is always on him. He's always yeah. feeling stressed. And that tells me that you're feeling stressed, that you are you are the boss. So the boss is you putting all this stress on your masculine to show up in a certain way. And he's like, I'm doing everything that I can but I just can't quite figure out what, what I need to do, you know? Yeah. And he gets the phone call. He's like, you're late. And he hangs up the phone, but he didn't leave. And um, he feels upset. And he's like, my boss is questioning me. And this is reflecting your masculine, how it's feeling inside, literally. How it, it's feeling like you're putting pressure to show up in a certain way or at a certain speed. And you're, he's like, but you're, or the boss, which is you, is saying you're late. You're mm -hmm. still not doing enough. You're still not showing up in the way yeah. that I need you to. And there's so much pressure on him. Mm -hmm. So then the scene switches and now there's this jewelry, right? So yeah. there are all, all these different jewels and jewelry typically represents something valuable, something very important. It's typically gold and gold is the color of the divine. So it's like whenever there's jewelry, you, you really want to pay attention. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and one of them was a snake and the snake is red and black. So like we spoke before, the colors are very important and so are the animals. Mm -hmm. So a snake represents the energy of rebirth and transformation, like shedding the skin, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and red correlates to the root chakra. Yeah. And which is like safety, security, family, these like being grounded, things like that. And black represents excess or the divine feminine. But in this case, I'm, I'm pretty sure it represents the excess, like too much of something, too much mm -hmm. pressure in this case, too much mm -hmm. pressure and yeah. feeling the need to, to, um, achieve more is typically like an out of balance root chakra mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um then you're in a different room and the the man is feeling sick and you knew you just had this feeling that he threw up in a bucket mm -hmm. so a bucket of water represents emotions right and there is there's a couple things in there there is blood and then the seaweed so the which is in the emotions so the emotions is heavy and mm -hmm. then there's seaweed which is green and that correlates to the heart chakra and then mm -hmm. there's blood, which represents red, and red represents the root chakra again. Yeah. So a lot of the times in dreams, if there's like a purging, like a, th a purge is throwing up something. Yeah. Or if you're sneezing or if you're choking up like phlegm or something like that, this is reflecting that uh, like an energetic purge. And anybody mm -hmm. that works with plant medicines is familiar with that, but anybody that doesn't may not be. Mm -hmm. But in a plant medicine ceremony with ayahuasca specifically, we'll go through a purge where you're throwing something up. Mm -hmm. And I've had multiple dreams where I'm throwing up in a dream and I wake up and I'm like, oh, I was actually purging that energy and my yeah. dream was reflecting that back to me. So mm -hmm. in this case, it was representing how your masculine is purging this energy, this heart energy and this root energy and mm -hmm. then releasing it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that also after you interpret this and I had this uh, like a reflection from me and I look into my real life, what's going on. So I can, you know, talk about a little bit because that's really, I think the most important after you get your dream interpreted is come back to your real life to find this similarity, like which part is mean to what, you know, in your real life, what's part in it. And you like 
like it's kind of like integrate a little bit. So I did mm-hmm. my in, in like integration after you after you sent me this integration, and I was like, this is so true because masculine to me is do do do, right? The unbalanced masculine is you always want this this part to achieve, to to do more, to achieve more, to uh, offer more, to serve more. When the masculine is like, I did everything. I could, what else I could do? So if I feel frustration, the, the masculine part of feel frustrated, it's actually me feel frustrated. So it reflects on is the, the, the project I'm doing. Um, you know, I have this side project, like Etsy platform to support people who have passive income. But I, I designed this project from a pure heart to kind of help people. But then I didn't realize that, you know, that when, it, it's like you have baby when the baby grow like you thought that like oh after five months the baby gonna find no it, you baby you know first year is really hard so it to me it's to the certain stage uh, i felt it's a heartache this misunderstanding or communication thing come in and i i know that deeply i already did my best like my masculine is like he did basically every single thing I want him to achieve, to put on, like everything. Like he put all his heart into it. And, but I'm still, my ego still not satisfied because I had a question. I had this uh, misunderstanding or this uh, question voice from, from external made my ego is like, you didn't do a good job. You could do even better. Why people would uh, come to you with this emotional, uh, like this communication with you? This should not never be happen. You know, this should never be happen. If you are, if the thing you did so perfectly, why people would come to you? You know. So mm-hmm. I was actually putting, putting like you know all the timelines, the deadline, like the boss tell the the masculine like you are late. So I probably, you know, I was kind of these days putting transform this fc project into a like 30 40 video series and i have my timeline and i was kind of pushing him to make things happen and he did it happen but i was like that's more i i I need to add a more video inside how can we make more time so he's kind of frustrated right and i feel i was like that's literally that was what's going on and the purging part i feel like to the point that you know my my masculine and my family, my higher self probably had a talk. I feel like I had a talk <laughs> with myself. It's like, Gina, hey, look, you did everything you could. Your heart, you know, when you start a project, is pure. Now your heart is still pure. It's but you need to change the way how you do the project based on, it's like you cannot take care of a newborn baby the same way as take, boy, take care of a baby when they are one year old. That's different. They have different needs. So you need to redirect your energy based on, not based on the newborn baby, but based on this one-year-old mm. child, you know? So and when I had this talk, actually, I felt it's like, yeah, what happened is already happened. I did my best. My masculine family did the best to attend the situation, which also meant to happen to help me grow. So I feel like my heart, it, like before, is closing a little bit. Now it's like, okay, everything is meant to happen. And all the emotional I process, yeah, I let you it literally go. purged it out. You let it yeah, go. I, I I let it go. So now it's like a root, like whether I feel this this like you know like urgency of achieving things. I don't. I was like whatever the you know I already did twenty videos the other day. Uh, the other day I did five. Now I have like twenty five, and I was like, oh, I still have four, three or four to do. I might not gonna have enough time before. I, heading to Sedona, but I was like, I'm in Sedona, I still have some rest days, I can finish it. You know, I'm not in a rush. Even mm-hmm. when people approaching to me say, hey, Gina, I'm ready to start this project with you. I was like, you know, I, to the point, I'm not rushing into, just because people say, hey, I'm ready to start this project. But I was like, I'm not ready yet because I'm going to this three weeks training that yeah. I don't think I will be have this capacity to both, you know, training also train other people so i i feel very proud of myself to to the point is that my masculine is like hey we are not in a like you know we need to rush to somewhere get this done so even till today i feel like the dream i had uh, four or five days ago still impacting on the decision i'm making right now so it's really really powerful you know dream and uh, I, it helped me to understand, it helped me understand my masculine part of what he wants and where he's at. And, you know, instead of like pushing him, blame myself, not him, actually blame myself. Mm-hmm. I can have this love and compassion for myself, knowing that I did my best. 
knowing there's nothing to rush into. So that's really powerful. So thank you so much on that dream. It's like, yeah, you're welcome. And that's yeah. a beautiful reflection and integration. And that's where the majority of the work is. It's like figuring out how to apply the wisdom of the dream into your life. Yeah. So we talked about the myth about a dream and we did some live dream inspiration. And then now I want to turn the mic back to you because I, I know people are so interesting to get them dream interpreted. And I know that this, you are already doing, you know, have, you know, clients from the service, but I felt, you know, we never really officially introduced your program. And I know you are designing the course to the point is, I think it's ready. I, I don't know. I think the time is, timing is really interesting between you and me, you know, like, the timing of you know all this uh, work you know are you working with me i work with you and uh, two days ago three days ago i was like hey do you want to do a live and you said yes and i was like how's your website you're like it's it's ready and i, I didn't know <laughs> i did not know it's ready so i want to you know turn back to you and introduce maybe your uh, program your website your package and your vision because i think this is really great opportunity you know after we you know introduce and also interpret a lot of dreams which is really important. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I just launched my website. It's live. I'm super excited. It's travennesta.com, T R A V I N N E S T A.com. And mm-hmm. I have a little bit about me on there. I have my services outlined. But so I have a few different packages right now. Yeah. I have um, a dream package where you have dreams, you want them analyzed. It's super simple. You, um, and I have, you send them over, I analyze them whether that's mm-hmm. over text, email, video, whatever it is. And then yeah. that can be done at any time. And I have two packages. I have a three dream package and a five dream package. Mm-hmm. And you can use, they never expire. So as people have dreams, you can send them over. And yeah. then I'll send back the analysis and it goes really in, in depth as well. Mm-hmm. And then for returning clients, I have two options. I have a 30 minute session and an hour long coaching session mm-hmm. where if, and this is for so, for people that I've worked with before, so yeah. that I've had exposure to their dreams. And mm-hmm. this is if people want to dive deeper, if they want to like ask more questions or learn more or have help um, figuring out how it relates to their life and kind of integrating the whole experience, I have yeah. that option as well. Do you, charge then, those, do you charge this 15, uh, did you say 15 or 30 minutes? So there's 30 minutes and oh, one hour. 30 minutes and one hour. Do you charge for this the 30 minutes, one hour session and how much you charge if, if so? Yeah. So okay. for the for the three dream package, it's $77. Mm-hmm. For the five dream package, it's $99. Okay. For the 30-minute coaching session for returning clients, it's $66. Okay. And then for the hour-long coaching session for returning clients, it's 122 I believe. Okay. Or 111 yeah. something like that. Yeah. And okay. um, yeah, and I also have – I'm almost done creating my dream course. And mm. this is more than a dream course. It's – yeah. It's profound and it's it's uh, it dives really really deep into spiritual awakening and helping mm. people navigate their spiritual path in like a very unique way using dreams and and figuring out how to understand your dreams in a deeper way and so I'm calling mm. it the um the dream interpretation and soul expansion program. Okay. And wow. Cool. Yeah. So it's the course has six modules and yeah. we're going to be diving into dreams, how to work with your dreams. I go through all the metaphors and the symbolism. I break down all the different dream types. Mm-hmm. So like we were talking earlier, like yeah. prophetic dreams, past life dreams, parallel dimensional dreams, narrative dreams, how to see what those are, how to navigate them. This is people that are, are super interested in connecting to themselves in a very deep way. I'm mm-hmm. also going to be getting into connecting to your higher self and to your guides and higher mm-hmm. dimensional beings in dreams, yes. learning how to, to recognize different, higher, like your higher self, learning how to recognize your spiritual guides, how to communicate with them, mm-hmm. things like that. And then yeah. I'll be also talking about how life is a dream. Yeah. How yes. literally life is a lucid dream and how to use all of the same techniques and ideas to analyze a dream to analyze your life and how powerful that is when you become this this master of navigating in every moment always Mm -hmm. being aware of what's happening to you because everything that's happening to you whether you're sleeping or you're you're awake awake. is trying to teach you always and then at the end i'll be kind of bringing it all in and teaching people how to to utilize all this information to evolve and heal spiritually okay so the dream course is it ready or not no, yes. it's not ready yet. Okay. Not yet. But I have an inf- I, at the bottom of the website under services. If you mm-hmm. read through the, the 
the course and everything and you're interested, you can put yeah. your information and I'll send out e like an email when it's ready to go. Great. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe next time we can, when your that party is ready, we can do a live, like a real life integration because I forgot to mention that part at the beginning, but it's perfect now. It's perfect time because I, after you did a, like, I think you did on Facebook, I had your real life like things happen in the real life you interpret that and you know what got me every time i go to the airport and i, I remember the kids you see they wear like with the blue, blue top or whatsoever and i'm not go out there i was just very sensitive <laughs> like who's around me what things happen because somehow it just stuck in my mind it's like be be very mindful for things happen in your real life as well because a lot of things are communicating with you and it give you the sign the color and the, you know what kind of person show up so I think this is really interesting, and I think that that would be our next time we do like when your website is ready, and we can get into this uh, our real life uh, mm -hmm. things interpret interpretation. But other than that, I think we are pretty on time as well. Yeah, oh that's my great timing. I feel like we already talked about three hours or something. Like when <laughs> you dive really deep, you know, like you stretch the time, don't you think? You know, yeah. like really. So. Yeah, so thank you, Trayvon, and for this beautiful session. And uh, um, when I, I can repost this uh, this video, and I want to put your website and uh, uh, also the like, package you you offer and your website, and uh, follow Trayvon on the Instagram. And do you still do this uh, first stream free thing or no? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I do first stream free. You can book that on my on my homepage. There's a link, or you can go to my my link tree on my yeah. Instagram. Okay, that's very important because I was I remember that I was and I already told it my sisters there. I was like, oh, did you change it? I'm glad you did not. <laughs> so first dream is free. So guys, yeah. just have him to try him try him out. You know, and it, it's just it's gonna blow your mind. Send some <laughs> like dreams really like uh, you feel send some some messages inside and you don't understand. You know, like that usually it's it have a lot of information you need to unpack. So. Thank you again, Trayvon. I love you so much. Yeah, it's been an honor. Thank you, you so much. I yeah. love you. You have a great day. Bye. You too. All right.